So I have with me today the brand new Fujifilm XS10. Special shout out to Moment and Fujifilm for making this video happen and for providing me with this camera for the past week or so to shoot with and give my honest impressions about this camera with you guys today. If you're new here, my name is Faisal and I'm a photographer based out of Boston, Massachusetts. I make videos on YouTube centered around street photography and I like to bring my viewers along with me on my photo walks and my POV style videos. Fujifilm has always had an eye for what their users want from their camera. There's a camera for just about every type of photographer and filmmaker. Now enter a new breed of X-Series camera, the XS family. Fujifilm cameras are known to have a traditional camera body design along with analog controls built into the camera body. And that's what personally drew me to the X100 series. The XS10 surprisingly departs from that traditional design ideology altogether to make a camera that's a lot more user-friendly to someone who's new to Fujifilm. And that's most notably indicated by this mode dial, which takes place where we're usually accustomed to seeing the shutter speed and ISO control. Since Fujifilm is marketing this camera to new Fujifilm users, people coming from other camera bands will feel at home with a dial like this. And unlike the manual control of a shutter speed and ISO dial, this mode dial is going to encourage you to use whatever camera mode you're most comfortable with. Personally, I never use any other mode other than manual and aperture priority. But what I love about this dial though are the four custom settings that you can easily access. And basically it can have each one set to a different film simulation recipe and have easy access to each one of them while I'm out shooting without having to go into my menu. By the way guys, I'll have a landing page linked in the description where you can check out the XS10 the lenses I used in this video, as well as this sweet looking Fujifilm Moment sling bag, perfect for your Fujifilm gear. On the photography side of things, you're going to get the latest X-Trans CMOS 4 sensor and fourth gen processor, which you see in the higher end X-T4 and X-100V. You're going to get 26.1 megapixels, allowing you to print and crop your photos, autofocus up to 0.02 seconds according to Fujifilm, a maximum of 20 FPS bursts shooting with an electronic shutter on with no crop, 18 different film simulations including a new Eterna bleach simulation, and 5 axis image stabilization for sharper images at lower shutter speeds, which will come in handy in those low light situations. And that's just the photography side of things. On the video side we have, again, built in 5 axis image stabilization, 4K in camera recording, up to 30 FPS, which is oversampled from 6K data, up to 240 FPS at 1080p, 422 10-bit color recording while using an HDMI, and a fully articulating tilt screen. The camera body alone will sell for just under a thousand US dollars. That's an extremely competitive price point considering the features that are in this camera. But I do wanna see how this camera performs in the real world. So I'm gonna take the XS10 out with me into the city and do some street photography. I'm also gonna be using the straight out of camera JPEGs using film simulations as well. All right, so we're in Chinatown, Boston right now, and I have... All right, so we're in Chinatown, Boston right now, and I have the brand new Fujifilm X-S10 with me. We're gonna see how this camera performs in the real world doing some street photography and just give a perspective from a street photographer and whether or not this camera is good enough for that and talk about a few key things about this camera, different features that this camera provides for photo and video. See if the autofocus held out on that. Yeah, autofocus is pretty snappy on this camera, which is good for street photography. Also, I'm using the Fujifilm 35mm 1.4. As you can see, it's a pretty compact body. Um, with this lens, it's perfect for street photography. Let's go to this alleyway.
I like your gun. Ten bucks. You want to buy it? No thanks. I kind of like how this little person sculpture, and then I have the reflections of people walking by. So the electronic viewfinder on this camera is, it's not as uh, clear as the X-Pro3 or the X100V, um, but it still gets the job done. Gonna get some of these reflections here. Actually, I don't know if uh, I'm a little too close. Oh, we got the bird. So this camera uses the same batteries as the X100F or X-Pro3, which is nice. If you're gonna do street photography for at least a couple hours, you're gonna wanna bring at least two or three. That's kind of the downside, but these batteries are so small, it's almost like you're just carrying a roll of film. That was five FPS. This camera goes up to 30 FPS shooting. It is cropped though at that speed. Um, the highest it goes without cropping is 20 FPS. I'm gonna wait for someone to walk this way. I'm guessing that they're gonna walk right into the sunlight. She'll light their face up. Ladies and gentlemen, we got them. That's an intense game right now. They didn't even know I was there. By the way, shout out to my friend Brian for helping me film that in the field segment. Um, he actually just recently started his own YouTube channel. I'll have that linked in the description. All right, I just wanted to share a few more impressions of the XS10 now that I have shot with it for a good amount of time now. And I think I should begin with just how it feels to hold and shoot with. Um, first of all, it's very lightweight. And that was probably the first thing I noticed when I picked up this camera for the first time was just how light it feels. And you know, for street photography, the lighter the camera, the better. It feels really good in the hand and that's thanks to this deep hand grip. It's definitely an upgrade over the X-T4 smaller hand grip, that's for sure. Now at times I did find that my pinky kind of fell underneath the camera body and you know that's kind of the result of having a smaller compact camera. If you have bigger hands that might be something you want to consider. You know for street photography and carrying a camera everywhere I go with me, you know I'd much prefer that smaller body. And I shot with this camera for about four hours straight doing some street photography. And not once did it feel uncomfortable to hold in my hand. So that's great. And no issues with overheating as well. Now this camera isn't going to overheat that quickly because there isn't any weather sealing as far as I know. Personally, I like to have my cameras weather sealed just so I have that added protection. And I do like to occasionally shoot in the rain, but I do get why that they chose to not put weather sealing in this camera because it is also a video camera. And with a potty this small, putting weather sealing in this camera, the heat's going to have a much harder time traveling out of the camera and you're just going to have an overheating disaster. <laughs> While I'm on the topic of this also being a video camera, I should mention the fully articulating screen. Obviously this is a great feature to have while you're doing video. So you, you, know, you can film yourself if that's something you're into. But on the photography side of things, I like to have that tilt screen option to be, you know, sneaky on the street. Um, this kind of defeats the whole purpose of being sneaky when the camera LCD screen comes all the way back out like this. 
But you know, that's kind of the issue you kind of run into when you're making a camera that's designed for both stills and video. You sort of have to pick and choose which features of the camera are going to lean on one end or the other. Here's some sample footage I got with the XS10 while shooting handheld 4K 30 FPS with no stabilization applied in post. Few more things on the button design layout as i mentioned before there is this mode dial which replaces the shutter speed and iso controls so you're not going to really get that traditional analog experience like you would with other fujifilm cameras this is definitely as digital as it gets in terms of fujifilm cameras that makes sense and that's all intentional i believe because this camera is intended for new fujifilm users so you know, even for me, who personally likes the analog experience of those Fujifilm cameras like the X100V, I still felt very comfortable and used to this design because it's very much like any other DSLR. There's a ton of customization on this camera as well, which I really like. This left side dial can be programmable to anything you'd like. There's another customizable function button next to the viewfinder which I have set to my photometry settings. The AEL, AF on, ISO, Q button, and record button are all customizable as well. Fujifilm's color science has always been really good. Not a lot of camera bands out there are promoting you to shoot straight out of camera JPEGs as much as Fujifilm is, but they do that for a good reason. The image quality and color science out of Fujifilm cameras combined with all the Fujifilm film simulations has completely simplified the workflow of photography. A new photographer can pick up a camera like the X-S10 and get a beautiful looking image that hardly needs any editing right out of the camera. The latest generation processor and sensor on the X-S10 combined with that Fuji color science produces some beautiful looking images. Here are a few more straight of camera JPEGs I took with the Fuji X-S10. A few more things I should mention. There is only one SD card slot. Uh, I didn't say that the EVF isn't as good as what you would see on like the X-Pro3 or X100V. From my own comparison, the EVF is just a little bit smaller than what's on the X100V. It's still bright and it's still responsive, which is good. I did find myself using the back LCD screen a lot more though while I was out shooting. These are all quality of life features though and you know most photographers looking for a camera in this price point can live without those features. I'd much rather have the features that they did choose to include, such as that latest generation processor, sensor, image stabilization, as well as really good ergonomics. After I was shooting with this camera for a decent amount of time, I realized that this camera just packs so much higher end power and performance that it can really be a viable secondary camera to those who might already have their workhorse kind of camera. As much as I've been saying that this is a camera kind of geared towards new Fujifilm users, I do feel like a lot of more experienced photographers and filmmakers will find the value in a camera that can excel at both photo and video and at an affordable price point. I had a blast shooting with this camera for the past two weeks, but it is time to say goodbye. I have a POV video coming up soon on this channel where I shoot with this camera a bit more and do some more street photography. So be on the lookout for that. That's all for me. Thanks for watching and I'll see you all in the next video.